This podcast is part of the National Archives War on Film series, marking the 70th anniversary of the start of the Second World War. Download more podcasts at nationalarchives.gov.uk. Carl Her Name with Pride recounts the telling story of an Anglo French girl, Violette Zabo, who, having married a French soldier, who gets killed in North Africa, who gives birth to a daughter. She then, to contribute to the war effort, and because of her linguistic skills, joins the Special Operations Executive. The records upon which the, the book was finally based, and of course the film was based, have only recently been made available at the National Archives at Kew. What follows is a letter taken from her record of service, which recounts her experiences in Germany and ultimately her murder by the Germans. Lieutenant Violette Zabo volunteered in early 1944 to undertake a particularly dangerous mission in France. This consisted in investigating a report that one of our secret organizations previously established in Rouen and Le Havre had been broken up by the Gestapo and, if this report proved accurate, to establish contact with any elements remaining uncontaminated. It was evident to Zabo that such work called for a particularly high degree of courage and finesse. But she undertook the task with enthusiasm and, in her execution of the delicate researches entailed, showed great presence of mind and astuteness. She was twice arrested by the German security authorities, but each time managed to get away by ruse. In April 1944, she, together with other members of her group, was surrounded by the Gestapo in a house in the southwest of France. Resistance appeared hopeless, but Zabo, seizing a Sten gun and as much ammunition as she could carry, determined to try and hold out, in the hope that help might come. She barricaded herself in part of the house, and, exchanging shot for shot with the enemy, killed or wounded several of them. By constant movement, she avoided being cornered, and went on firing until she dropped exhausted after several hours, her ammunition expended. The German commander paid tribute to her courage. She was taken off in captivity, and had to endure solitary confinement and the torture of the cold douche and others. When she was moved to Germany, she travelled by a train in which several other captured members of this department were being conveyed to concentration camps. Zorbo knew by sight some of these men, who were in a cattle truck at the far end of the train from her. The train was heavily attacked by the RAF. The German guards, having secured the prisoners and locked the train, left the track to go for shelter. Zorbo, taking a pannikin of water, crawled on all fours, her hands were manacled, up the entire length of the corridor of the train to bring water and comfort to the officers whom she knew. Her action raised morale incalculably and was instrumental in encouraging many of these officers to continue resistance. Although Zabo was continuously and atrociously tortured, she never by word or deed gave away any of her acquaintances or told the enemy anything of any value. She showed great courage in exhorting other women prisoners to be of good cheer and walked proudly to the gas chamber, knowing full well the fate that was in store for her. She gave a magnificent example of courage and steadfastness to all that had the honour of knowing her. She is very strongly recommended for the George Cross. For her ultimate sacrifice and death at the hands of the Germans, Violette Zabo was awarded a posthumous George Cross, which was awarded to her next of kin at the end of the Second World War. As with uh, many female agents, SOE agents, who lost their lives in the Second World War, the circumstances of their deaths were not immediately known. And a lot of research was done primarily by Vera Atkins, who worked at F section, the French section of SOE, looking into their um, experiences out in, in France and, and ultimately their deaths. A lot of confusion um, was created by pieces of information being gathered from lots of different places and so many people thought that a lot of the agents had been gassed but ultimately the majority of them were actually shot. This podcast includes images and extracts taken from records at the National Archives and its copyright of the Crown. <laughs>